y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Holistic Conversations. I'm your host, Brittany, and today we're going to talk about things all health and wellness, okay? We got an expert on Tori, yes. you know? Thank you <laughs> yes, for coming on. Made it happen. Yes. yes, yes, yes. And we go way back. Way back. Way back, 2017. Come on. You know, um, I met you at a vegan festival, mm. and I seen your sign, like, because you were practicing a holistic approach to Correct. wellness, and it wasn't just focused on training. Correct. Right? Correct. So that really grabbed my attention because I was on the same type of vibe. Mm. Like, it's health, it's not just one dimensional. Come on. <clears throat> you know? So uh, tell me tell me about LOJ and what made you want to start that Fit Club. Yeah, for sure. Well, first I want to just say mm-hmm. that this is such a nice setup and I love this podcast. <laughs> Thank and you. And I think and I know it's going mm-hmm. to affect so many people on a major level because they need to hear this and the journeys in which we led us to this point. Mm-hmm. So um, you asked me about what LOJ is, et cetera, my holistic health. So yes, LOJ Fit Club is Line of Judah Fitness Club, which is a holistic wellness business that I created out of understanding the necessity that most people needed, you know, holistic health. They might have knew about fitness. They might have knew a little bit about nutrition, but I didn't see many people putting it all together. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up this way, which I know we probably dive more into, but I grew up this way. And so I I said to myself, hey, well, you play sports. Are you trying to make it to the NFL or the NBA? Probably not. So therefore, you need to you need to figure out what you're going to do. And so I wanted to go to the route of entrepreneurship. And then what I knew best and what my family knew was holistic health. And so I created a business after it. Mm -hmm. And where are you from? I am from Atlanta. So, okay. Yeah, okay. Born and North, raised. Yeah, born and raised. I was okay. born in Atlanta, but I ended up growing up more like North Georgia, Cartersville area. Mm-hmm. And um, but this is where I'm originally from. Okay. Do you get tired of Atlanta? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Outside of Atlanta, mm-hmm. in the United States, I don't like to be anywhere but Atlanta. But yes, I get tired of the United States. I wouldn't say mm-hmm. necessarily Atlanta so much, but I get tired of the United States. Um, Atlanta though is, is, is when I go out anywhere else in the United States, I'd be ready to get back. Other than sometimes what give me Atlanta vibes is the South side of Chicago. <laughs> I do like the South side of Chicago. I will say. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Cause I know people that, that grow up in Atlanta or born in Atlanta, mm. they like, no, I'm tired of Atlanta. I want to go somewhere else and move. So they want a different experience. And that's yeah. pretty much how everybody is. They mm-hmm. always want something different other than what they have accustomed to. Yeah. Unless yeah. you find your niche and then you find your niche and you see the opportunity in Atlanta. You think I got to stay here. Come on. Yeah. Because the networking available, uh, the networking abilities and the, you know, just the affluence that Atlanta has, especially on the black scene is like nowhere else in the United States for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you say you grew up a certain type of way. So were your parents into <clears throat> veganism and the holistic approach to living? Yeah, great question. So my father, by the time I was born, he was already in a holistic way of life. Mm. He's always been a Pan-Africanist. And that led him to a community or a nation of people that left America and went, they left out of Chicago on the west side of Chicago, Mm -hmm. and left and went to Israel. And so in the late 1960s, early 1970s, we established a community in Israel, which was a vegan, holistic health community. So when my father found that community, he was already living that way. And so by the time I was born, that is what I understood my father to be. So that's where it originated. And so, you know, that had influence over my whole family, and we all adopted this way of living. So mm-hmm. I was born into it in that way, correct. So did you ever eat meat or? Yes. Okay. I stopped eating. I never ate pork before in my life. Mm-hmm. And then I stopped eating uh, I stopped eating everything else around 14, but I stopped eating beef around like 4 and 5. And then I just only ate chicken for the most part. I didn't even like fish back then. And so um, I stopped eating chicken around 14 years old. I made the decision. Mm. Yeah. And 14, that was your own decision. That was my own decision. Do you remember what provoked that decision? Yes. <clears throat> to me, it was now that I had the ability to create, which I don't like to make food, by the way, but mm-hmm. because I had the ability to just make a little sandwich or something, um, to me, what made sense was when I would go to my father's house, 
his food would always taste better. Mm. So, but he's also educating me on why he's eating the way he's eating and why we shouldn't be eating the way that we was eating. And so when it when it came time, I'm like, well, hold on. If it's better for me and the food tastes better, why in the world am I eating this stuff? And so I just made a stand. I was like, I ain't eating that stuff no more. Mm. So your father allowed you to make the decision on your own. So yeah, so we were in a split household. So if I was in, if we were in the same household, mm-hmm. then I would have never been eating that stuff in the first place. Mm. But because we were in a split household, my mother was the one that was, you know, you know, McDonald's, you know, Burger King, whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. Mm-hmm. So you know, she at that point, if I told her, hey, I'm not eating that, then she like, okay, well, cool. You know, so she wasn't necessarily opposed to it. My father was proud, like, all right, smart. You know, that's mm-hmm. what I've been wanting you to do. But yeah. yeah, so the opportunity came in that way. Wow, that's mm-hmm. exciting. Yes. And you say, and you've been to Israel or you lived there? Mm-hmm. Wow. So yeah, I go back and forth to Israel. Mm-hmm. Do your father stay there? No, but he did for some years. Mm-hmm. Um, but he also goes back and forth to Israel. Um, and, but my sisters grew up in Israel. I got three sisters that mm-hmm. were, you know, um, well, actually five sisters that was raised in Israel. Okay. Yeah, for a significant That's exciting. Time. And what would you say is the difference between like Israel and America? Yeah. So, <clears throat> well, definitely a culture shock. Number one, just going to, if you ever traveled outside of the country and you go to a place that is not English speaking and you speak English, it feels mm-hmm. weird. Mm-hmm. Right. So it feels like, um, it feels definitely like a, a a culture warp. Like it's like whoa, like these people ain't even speaking, you know, the language in which I know. Mm-hmm. So that is a significant difference culturally. The people are also, you know, quite different. In Israel people are aggressive in Israel. Mm. Yeah, like if you driving, I mean, they blowing a horn. You know, you might mm. be walking, they stop right in front of you it ain't like Mm -hmm. they're very aggressive and so you got to get used to certain things like that food wise um israel is on track to be the first vegan nation in the world Mm. that was inspired by our community because beforehand they ain't know nothing about veganism but now veganism runs rampant in israel Mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of innovation in the vegans field wow wow that reminds me. I actually I never been to New York, but the aggression part and the honking the horn mm, yes. gives me the idea of that's how New York is. So I was yes. saying like okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like that. Yes. Mm. It is it's very much like that. Yes. Okay. What would you say was the starting point where you wanted to teach other people about health and wellness? Since I was born. Mm. <laughs> I've always just had a spirit of being like a teacher. And so in being a teacher, I've just always taught people. That was just natural for me to do. Whether it had whether it was based on nutrition, holistic health, fitness, sports, or even spirituality, culture, whatever it was. It don't matter. If I knew about it, mm-hmm. conspiracy theories, whatever. Whatever it was, I was always teaching. So that was already naturally what I was already doing. Right. So just turn it into a business allowed me to be able to monetize it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what is the number one reason people have not taken their health seriously? Because I'm I'm assuming, well, I know for sure you have um, had, you have had multiple clients, right? And you have to sell them. Mm -hmm. So what is that number one complaint on why they won't get started to change in their lifestyle? Yep. It's cultural and societal deception. Mm. And to explain what that means is, is that health within the culture and within the society at large has been misconceived. It's been... It's been defined in a way that it's not. So mm-hmm. people are actually, are un- they're under a deception. They're believing that health is going to go get a checkup. They believe that health is, well, I got an ailment, so I take medication. Mm-hmm. They believe that health is, well, I, just, I ain't got diabetes or high blood pressure, so I must be healthy. And so 
that's the problem. That's what we're facing against. We're facing against a, a system that is defining health in a way that in the holistic world would not be correct. That's the biggest issue that we're fighting against. Mm, yes, yes, that is the biggest thing we're fighting against. Why do you believe that the system is set up that way? Like, why, 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 why wouldn't the system want the people to be healthy? That is, a, that is actually, <laughs> a very, yeah, that's a great question that mm. you ask. The reason why the system does not want you to be healthy is because this system is set up to monetize. Their monetization comes from sickness. Mm. So a person who would be healthy would not necessarily yield the fruit in their world that would that would allow them to because they don't know the world of health. OK, their world has been set up from a place of sickness and disease and mad. Think about it. The health care system is hospitals being built right now. They clapping. Mm -hmm. In reality, we're supposed to be saying no, because a hospital means that there's more sick, more sick people. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in order for their system to flourish, because this is how they set up set up the system, they need more sick people, which is why your great question, it shows where your heart is and where our minds are. As a people, mm -hmm. we're naturally inclined to health. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't even be in our mind to be like, hold on, why, why wouldn't the government, why wouldn't the society, why wouldn't be, we be promoting health? We can't even conceptualize it. And mm -hmm. that's what we're fighting against, <laughs> Brittany. We're fighting against mm -hmm. that mindset because people, there are people, not yourself, because you've already taken this journey and you know that, okay, something ain't right. But there are so many people who are ha asking the same question and they can't believe that a system would even be so diabolical. Mm, yes, yes. And that's the starting point to realizing that what you've been taught has been a lie. And it's hard to really take right. that in yes. because if you think about, oh, they lied to me about my health, what <laughs> else are, are they, they lying, lying to, to me, me about? about. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. it gets deeper and a lot of people don't want to confront those truths. That's so they rather is, hold man. on yes. to what's normal and what they've been taught because it's easier to deal with. That's exactly correct. Mm -hmm. That is exactly correct because then they would have to go down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. of correction and change. And people hate change. And it's not easy. And it's not easy. So what is the starting point? Somebody who say, okay, I see, I, I see, I see the truth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, where do I start to prepare myself to make a transition? Well, <clears throat> It's not a coincidence that the word that came out of your mouth was the word that I was about to use as it relates to a, a biblical verse that will relate to what you just asked, and you use the main word within it. Mm -hmm. So it says, seek ye the truth, and the truth shall, in English it says, it shall set you free, but in the Hebrew it says, it shall make you free. Mm -hmm. So seek ye the truth, and it shall make you free. So the question to what you ask, what should be the first step, is you got to seek it. You have to start being in love with the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth is eternal facts, meaning truth is the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. That's a truth because that will never change. Mm -hmm. To be true means, hey, I'm right, right here in, in the podcast chopping up with Brittany. That's true, but it ain't truth because it's not eternal. I won't forever be right here in this podcast, it's, even though it's good. I mean, I ain't, I'm chilling. I'm cool. But <laughs> yeah. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what truth is. They got to seek the truth, and you got to learn to fall in love with the truth and let the truth define you. Let the truth edify you. Let the truth enhance you. And that's where transformation starts. Mm, that's really good. And when you seek the truth, then you get the motivation mm -hmm. to want to change because now you're learning and learning could be fun, right? Absolutely. Especially if the goal <clears throat> is to become the best version of yourself. Absolutely. You will fall in love with the truth and you won't get so afraid of it, right? Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Now take me to step number two. You yep. found the truth, yep. right? You got some motivation. Mm -hmm. Now what are we doing? The second thing we must do is we must detoxify. Mm -hmm. Okay? What does that mean? We must now separate ourselves from any and everybody who is in opposition to the truth. Mm -hmm. Because this creates your environment. And environment 
is more influential than almost any other component when it comes to your reality, which is why they say birds of a feather flock together. You don't see eagles flying with pigeons. Mm -hmm. They're on two different altitudes. So then you got to find out now on your journey to be an eagle, who are the pigeons around you, whether that is what you following on social media, whether that is where you're going on Friday nights, whether it is what you're watching on TV, you got to find where those pigeons are and you got to separate yourself from those pigeons doing this incubator stage because it's like an unto a plant that's getting transferred from being a seedling and then into the greater, you know, place where you are wanting to plant it. It's a very sensitive, you know, transformation. So you have to get rid of anything that does not serve and does not accurately represent where you're wanting to go. Okay. And give me some examples, right? Of <clears throat> some of the things we need to cut off. I'm trying to think about when I started my journey mm -hmm. and I'm sure the first thing I probably stopped doing was watching television. Mm. Right. Because mm -hmm. um, it can be a distraction. And once you find yourself doing things better with that time, then you're like, oh, I don't need to watch this show. And Correct. then next thing you know, you're like, oh, I ain't watched that show in a month. Correct. You know. Yes. So what are some other things that people um, need to pay attention to and that they should think about cutting off or detoxifying from? Yes. Ooh, Brittany, we're going to mm -hmm. they going to. <laughs> Brittany, they, gonna, they might not like me after this. Okay, yeah. they might not like me. So, um, well, we already kind of iterated and want to reiterate social media. Okay. So social media, meaning people who are promoting ideas that are in oppos opposition to where we're headed to. Mm -hmm. So social media for sure. Are um, you saying social media, you should just cut it off? Not necessarily. Or you reduce you your just time? Reduce or? your time, but also reduce your what you are giving your time mm. to. So if you're keeping up with the Kardashian, mm -hmm. is the Kardashian helping you as the links relates to holistic health, wealth, right? right? And the way that you f see fit to do it in truth. And if it's not, you got to cut it off. You got to unfollow. You got to unfollow. You got to unfollow. Yes. Okay. Right? Yes. So utilizing it better because it could edify you, mm -hmm. but you got to cut off first what is not doing right. that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This is a big one. Okay. Close your ears, Brittany. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Music. <laughs> yes. Ooh. Yeah. This is a hard one for our people because music, we are such vibrational people that music plays such a huge role in our life. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand something. This industry is another industry that's not based on truth, that has been purposely propagated to raise up influencers who will get you on a trajectory of self-destruction. Mm -hmm. All you hear, and especially with rap music, especially with the youth, is way more and more ways on how to self-destruct, how to be irresponsible with your income, mm -hmm. how to be irresponsible in relationships, how to be irresponsible with what you eat in, everything, irresponsible with your body. So music is a huge, and the culture around the music, it didn't used to be like that. Mm -hmm. In the 60s, what our parents was listening to? Our great grandparents in the fifties, they talking about love and about heart and about how this love feels so good. But when they seen and they understood how much of a vibrational people we were, and we they were able to capitalize on it, they said, "Well, we need to do a double edged sword. We need to continue to influence them, but now let's influence them in a direction that does not edify them as a people, so that we can keep them in bondage. Mm -hmm. And we got to separate from toxic music." Yes. Because the way the music culture is going right now is it seemed like it's just women against men and men against women, right? And it's like, oh, my God, really? This is what our people like to listen to? <laughs> Don't Man, make sense. They need help. And a yes. lot of the times, too, it's that beat. It's the. It's not even the work. It's, it's, it's the, the. It's the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's the vibration. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you said we are vibrational beings, People, that's right? right? So break that down. What do that mean? Yeah. So in simplicity, everything that exists, this couch, the clothes you're wearing, the clothes I'm wearing, mm -hmm. right? Everything that exists operates and comes from a vibration. 
It is vibrating at a certain frequency that then manifests itself in the physical form. Mm -hmm. So in that understanding, what ends up happening is, is every tune is a vibration. And us as people with soul, think about it. Look at us. Look at the way we do everything. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do, Brittany, people emulate they can't even help it. We so influential because we so soulful. But that soul is coming because of our deep connection and understanding to the vibrational forces that exist on this planet. So being that we're deeply connected, we're also easily mm -hmm. influenced by vibration. Mm -hmm. So then with everything that we do, we have to ask ourselves, is this thing a positive and or a negative vibration? So... The clothes we wear has a vibration attached to it. Cotton, 100% mm -hmm. cotton, is operates on a frequency of 100, okay? Which is oftentimes the same frequency that your body, in a healthy form, needs to be operating from. Mm -hmm. But polyester is 15%. That's the same frequency as when you're dying and you're now considered dead. Mm. Linen, 5,000. Mm. Wool, 5,000. Mm. But you don't mix wool. And the scripture said, don't mix fabric together. Why? Because they're different. So uh, wool goes from uh, right to left, I believe, and linen goes from left to right. Mm -hmm. So the frequency and how it transfers the energy are different. So you don't wear them together, but, but when you are wanting to heal, you need to be within those frequencies. So I say all that to say, that every single thing that we do, hear, feel, touch, okay, mm -hmm. taste, has a vibration, uh, a vibrational frequency attached to it, which we have to be cognizant and saying, is this bringing us closer to life or is it bringing us closer to death and destruction? Mm. Ooh, that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> that's deep. The I read a book. And it was talking about water mm -hmm. and how if we put an intention on the water, mm -hmm. it will change the shape of mm -hmm. the molecules of yes, the water. Absolutely. And I feel like that right there really depicts a really good image of how this these because it's unseen. So it's hard to believe if you don't see it. That's correct. Right? Yes. But that water example, you can really see, oh, my words really do have an effect on what's coming out in the world yes, right absolutely. the music i listen to is affecting my body in some way is changing my chemistry up that's right so i think it is very important for us to understand that it's a bigger thing happening one thousand percent you know absolutely and that's the japanese scientist that you're referring to mm -hmm. who found that yes that study exactly you're absolutely correct i made a piece of content where i was in the store you ever seen that water called um uh what is it called? Uh, liquid death. Mm -mm. Okay, there's a water in the <laughs> I'll store. I'll be scared to drink right. that. Right. <laughs> there's a water in the store yeah. that's literally bottled liquid death. Mm -hmm. And I made a post referring to understanding the book that you referred to and the study that you referred to. Why would you ever write that on a, uh, uh, um, you know, why would you ever write that on, and probably they don't know, but why would you ever write that on a bottle that you're drinking out of because of the vibrational frequency that is transferred into that water? Mm -hmm. And so exactly. So yes. just to just to, you know, because that was another saying. one. Um, that was another example. I think they put that on food. They put food in the mason jar and they put the word love and they put the word hate on it. Exactly. Just the word itself written <clears throat> and it still produce a different effect on the food. Um, I think the 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 one with hate on it got older faster, yep. and so what we think, how we feel, what we listen to, all of this matters. And health Big is time. more than just what do you eat. That's correct. You know, it's what do you consume as a whole. Come on, yes. So yes. let's uh, let's take a break. Let's take a break. I got you a, a gift on the side. Aww. You know, right here we got some. Oh, come on. <laughs> we go yes. take a health break. Yes. I got you our elder punch tea. Ooh. So we got elderberries. We got hibiscus in there. Come on. And then we also use a unfiltered apple juice to mm. um, really, you know, balance out those flavors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we go open it up. We go cheers to our health and wellness. Ooh, can I and record this? Put it for behind the scenes? Yep, behind okay. the scenes. Oh, 
Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So tell them what we got here. Okay, so we got elderberries. Mm-hmm. We got an elder punch tea, mm-hmm. right? It's elderberries in here, hibiscus. We also have, we sweeten it with the organic unfiltered apple juice. Oh, wow. And this is really good for your, your immune system and to increase your vitamin C levels. Oh, wow. Okay, so we go take a cheers right now, mm, yes. you know, to our health and wellness. Boom. Cheers to that. And can I say the affirmation? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Energized. Come on, let's get back on the mic too, though. Okay, cool. Yeah, yes. Cause we go take we taking a break, but it's really just a gotcha. Only yes. si- gotcha. Yes. All right, I'm clear. <laughs> I'm clear. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I am energized. Yes. Yes. I mm-hmm. am focused. I mm-hmm. love it. I love it. Come so, on. like you say, what we put on these bottles and these labels, yes. really do affect the product itself. So, yes. I love it. I Boom. Love it. Okay, cause I, I'm like. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, vitamin C. Come on. Mm. It's not because, you know, hibiscus can have a more tart mm-hmm. feeling to mm-hmm. it. The elderberry together just, bl- I'm just, it's a perfect blend. I love mm-hmm. it. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Yes, it is. Wow. So while, we, while we're here and, um, and we're talking about health and wellness. Mm-hmm. I want to know what are some herbs because we were just saying that step two is detoxing, right? Yes. So what are some good herbs or <clears throat> some good things we can put inside of our body to help with that detoxing process? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about it. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> number one, herbs. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Herbs completely changed my life. Mm. All these years, although I've been on the holistic health journey, I did not realize the power of herbs. I underestimated the power of herbs. <clears throat> About a couple of years ago, I just started taking herbs on a regular, like loose leaf, you know, like burdock root and ginkgo. And, you know, as I started taking those herbs, my immune system, nothing else. I always took supplements, but... Mm-hmm. My immune system shot through the roof, Brittany. Mm. It shot through the roof. And so herbs is one of the most slept on jewels and gold on this planet that we are not utilizing enough. And so <clears throat> you asked me, what were some good herbs as it relates to detoxification? So let me tell you my routine that I do every morning. Listen, it's only because we're on Britney's podcast that I'm giving you this secret, all right? There we go. All right, Britney, this is exclusive. <laughs> we're dropping the gems on yes. holistic conversations. It's exclusive. Okay. Yes. And you know I'm I'm here for anything holistic. All right, so <clears throat> burdock root is good for cleansing your blood. Remember, the life in the creature is in the blood, okay? So our bodies, our blood, burdock root, dandelion root, root or leaf for almost everything, but especially your kidneys, Mm -hmm. okay? Ginkgo, Dr. Daniel Amen is the number one expert on brain health. He does all kind of brain scans. He said the most beautiful brains that he he scans always take ginkgo. Mm -hmm. I take ginkgo every day. Okay. Um, I also take... I take yerba mate for energy. Mm-hmm. And I drink that tea. You drink, drink that tea, yerba yeah. mate? Yep. Mm-hmm. I take I got the the loose leaf and then I make the tea. It's in my blend. And then I also take ooh, you ever heard of Damiana? I haven't. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damiana. It's good. <clears throat> they say it's many things. They say it's aphrodisiac and all this kind of stuff. But to me. It's something that just calms me all the way down. Mm-hmm. It's for like anxiety. I take it for anxiety. And then you can even smoke it, which either have a more profound effect as well. And so honestly, when I get into a, a flow state, mm-hmm. when I'm working and I get into my flow state on a daily basis, I feel like my third eye literally is like vibrating and my whole body starts to release some type of feel good hormones throughout my whole body. Like I'm on a natural high, like I've never felt before. Mm. And I believe that Damiana contributes a lot to that feeling. Wow. Wow. 
I think I need to take some Damiana. Yes, Damiana is from <laughs> Damiana. Mexico. Yeah, sound like somebody yeah. auntie, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> That'd be a cool name. Like, hey, Damiana. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. Yes. That's, that's what's up. That's what's up. Um, and you just mentioned the third eye, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And tell me exactly what is the third eye. And I will talk about my personal experience with it mm. when I first got into meditation in like 2016. Okay. I started practicing um, meditation. Yes. Meditating every day, right? Yes. And when I first started meditating, I was actually, I was scared. Mm. I was scared <clears throat> because you're going into this place Unknown. where it's on. There we go. <laughs> It's the unknown. Yes. And the first time I did, I'm like, okay, I got to keep all the lights on. Right. Because you you will read about it, and then they'll say something about, like, dark energies, being right. in corners. So right. I'm like, okay, to help, you know, calm this fear down, I'm going to meditate with the lights on. Yes. And once I started meditating, getting more comfortable with it, okay, I went into uh, doing it with the lights off. And after i would say after about like three months of meditating i started seeing mm. an image mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and that image was the eye mm. and then i was like hmm it just for me and where i was i'm like okay this means self-aware a uh, self-awareness mm. i'm getting to become aware of myself yes and bigger than like okay i'm britney and i like to meditate it's like no my human aspects of who I am. Correct. So I got it. I actually got it tatted on me. So when you speak of the third eye, nice. tell me what do that mean to you? <clears throat> so it's something I'm still researching myself mm -hmm. and learning more about. However, what I do know is, is, is that it's the pineal gland. Mm -hmm. And that pineal gland is responsible for some major operations within the body. Glands create hormones. Hormones, the simple way to say hormone, is an instruction. So given to where it's even located, mm -hmm. lets you know that it has to be very important. And so I don't know much about it. And I'm still something, I'm still, you know, uh, um, and I think scientists are still trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I just do know that it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And I know that it has a profound effect on how your body operates on a day to day. Mm. Okay. Okay. We all need to learn more about, about that third eye. It. Correct. And the pineal gland. Yes. And the hormones they release. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. Correct. That's good. I, I know this, especially in the male, mm -hmm. <clears throat> with semen retention mm -hmm. and retaining your semen, what happens is is that fluid is the same fluid that goes up and down your spinal cord. Mm -hmm. And so when you are uh, contracting your pelvic floor and then you're also breathing and exhaling up, that fluid hits your pineal gland. And when, that pine when it hits your pineal gland, it crystallizes. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what I told you what I'm feeling when I be feeling. That's what I feel. And mm -hmm. so it crystallizes and literally, I promise you, it's almost like I'm in heaven the way that I feel with it. My body, I get into like a a state to where time seemed like it slowed down for me. Like, I, I promise mm -hmm. you, I kid you not. Yeah. That's literally how I feel. Wow. So, so yes, I do know that that is also a thing that I wanted to just kind of share. Okay. And we were, you were talking about men, right? Yes. And I feel like men are going through a lot. And I don't know if it's being talked about. Just my <clears throat> observation, a lot of men are balding faster mm, earlier, mm -hmm. and I don't really know what's contributing to that. Mm -hmm. um, I heard this is, <laughs> I haven't done no research on this, yep. but I did hear like it could be over ejaculation yep. and could cause baldness. Yep. So I'm not sure if that's true or false, but I'm like, interesting. I never <laughs> put those two together. Well, Brittany, just to show you just how aligned you are, that's what I was about to go to, and that was the first thing I was going to say. Wow. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, a man asked me that on a <clears throat> live one time, mm -hmm. and when he asked me that live, that's what I told him. I said, you got to be very careful as it relates to ejaculation. Ejaculation, is this is a force that is able to create life. So you're losing minerals, mm -hmm. and if you are ejaculating three times a day, 
bro, and then you eat, and then you got the nerdy McDonald's. That's what your source is. <laughs> That's how you're going to replenish your body? That's how you... So you're not even replenishing. So you're losing substance. Mm -hmm. So, yes, over-ejaculation is absolutely, I know for a fact, because it's losing minerals. So it is absolutely causing, when your minerals are being lost, then it's not able to produce, to have the energy to produce the hair on top of your head. So that is absolutely a thing. Mm -hmm. And also, there's uh, more children being developed with birth defects. And it could, <clears throat> and I, I read something about like a man's chromosome and they're missing some letter in their chromosome. Mm. Are you familiar with Mm-mm. that? No? Mm-mm. Okay. That's that's one thing that um, I found. I'm like, wow, a man can miss, like lose their chromosomes. Wow. I'm like, that's very interesting. Wow. I'm not really uh, too sure about that, but... I think that we need to, you know, shine a light on men's health. Correct. Right? So what are some herbs or what are some foods or what are some ways that men could replenish, right? Yes. The the prostate, is the prostate the mm-hmm. one that could kind of control the... the That's the muscle more so behind it, but okay. um, the, the testes, and mm-hmm. that's where uh, semen is created. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, what gives support in the re- male's reproductive area... Um, one of the most important things is zinc. Mm, okay. When you eat, don't take zinc without eating because you will feel very nauseous. <clears throat> when you eat a meal, a good solid meal, take zinc with it. Mm-hmm. Zinc helps rebuild it like this. A lot of nuts and seeds have zinc in it. Mm-hmm. So pumpkin seeds, I eat pumpkin seeds uh, uh, half a cup a day. Mm-hmm. And then I eat half a cup of walnuts, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, okay, um, Brazil nuts, high in selenium, which also all these minerals play a big role. So nuts, 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 no pun intended. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so, good. yes, and so um, nuts, seeds, fruit, plenty of fruit, mm-hmm. green leafy vegetables. That's yeah. it. Eat, eat. You yes. stuff to come from the earth. Yes, yes, Wa- yes. Watermelon juice. Mm. Now, who don't love some watermelon juice? Oh, my juice? goodness. What? <laughs> right. So I lived in Belize. I don't know if you know this, but I lived in Belize for two mm-hmm. years. And the watermelon juice, 16 ounces, was a dollar. Mm. I would load that lady up. I would go in there and buy 16 at a time, almost about two times a week. Wow. I would drink. Two or three of those bottles every single day. Oh my goodness, I couldn't get enough of that water <laughs> juice. Right, that's what's up. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. And um, that was on my list. I wanted to talk about Belize. And um, did I say that right? Belize. Yep, you said okay. it right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. And because I, I heard that that's one of the places that still speak English. That's correct. Yes. And so tell me about Belize. I've never been there before. So why? Why did you go there and live there for two years? Yeah, so Belize was it was it was like I didn't know what to expect. I had no idea what to expect going to Belize. Mm-hmm. It is the only Central American country that speaks English, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> or that English is the the dominant language. But the culture of Belize, it reminded me when I got off the plane, Brittany. I felt like I was in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Like you know, they saw me and they could just you know they they know they know the look. So they're like, hey, I'm on Wagwan. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it. Is. I'm thinking Belize is like you know it's like more like Mexican. I ain't know what to expect. Man, they would get off the plane just all black people, mm. and I'm like, oh, this is a black country. And they got that soul reggae vibe, that Rasta vibe to them, and. They are all about herbs, and they know about the herbs and living off the land and farming. They live a very simple life. Belize allowed me to heal. Mm. I healed in Belize because I went during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I was at resorts, Brittany. <clears throat> I was at resorts that nobody else was there. Okay? White sand beach, just 
oh, look up at the skies and just the stars, the beach right here, the ocean. Do you understand the type of healing that my body, the type of peace, the mm-hmm. type of, I felt peaceful, like what? So yeah. I healed during that time frame. Mm-hmm. That's what beliefs was for me. And what what did you, what, what were you healing from or what did you heal from? Yeah. Yeah, well, be, being in America. Mm-hmm. And all of the stuff. And all of the stuff. Just yeah. being in America. Mm-hmm. You know, just being in this type of environment mm-hmm. is imperative to heal from. And you don't even know until you come outside of it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's really deep. That's really deep because it's so much going on on our day to day in our day to day lives, but we don't have time to just be at peace. Correct. Unless we are sleeping, and nowadays more people are having a harder time going to sleep. Correct. So it's like, when do we really get a moment to exactly. just be at peace? peace. Yes. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. And sleep. Most people do not sleep well at all mm-hmm. and nowadays too you know we've, the social media thing again you up you late at night you scroll and scroll and next thing you know two hours go by four hours go by now you up it's two o'clock you gotta wake up it yeah Woo. that's they are getting us yes major major <laughs> yes. major so i want to also talk about women's health Ooh. what are some of the things you um you run across <clears throat> as far as women what are we dealing with yes so um don't beat me up, ladies. All right. I'm only qualified to speak on this because y'all are who supported me over the years. When I first set out for this business, Brittany, I didn't realize that I was going to be mostly just working with women. Mm-hmm. But women are the ones who are out here doing the healing. They mm-hmm. are out here doing being ones like, what I need to do? So all my clients just kept being women, 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 women. So I learned a lot about women. And on how to set women up to heal themselves. So I got a webinar. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, I want I want to do a collaboration with you with the webinar. So you invite your audience on with us and then you just kind of tell your background and your story and things like that. Okay. This webinar is called The Six Diseases That Disproportionately Affect Black Women and How You Can Reverse and Prevent Them. Mm. Come on, break it down. What's the six? Yeah, so I need, <laughs> <laughs> I need the six. So what we'll talk about <clears throat> is what I want to talk about is reproductive health. Mm-hmm. This is the major one mm-hmm. because this just don't affect you. This affect future generations to come. Yes. Okay. So I also have a master class called the War on the Womb. Mm-hmm. Okay, a secret war being waged on the black woman's womb, the woman of African descent's womb. And the re- reproductive health is always a result, like most things, and Dr. Sabi said it very profoundly, that, you know, that mucus is the root of all disease. Mm-hmm. Inflammation. So when inflammation is built up in the reproductive system, it takes form in disease, dis-ease, or lack of peace in many different ways. Some cases, it's fibroids. Mm-hmm. Fibroids you know, is really your body trying to react to create a pocket in order for those toxins to go in. So it's actually a good thing in the sense that it's trying to encapsulate the toxins that are around. So what we got to address is the toxicity and the toxic environment in that area. Then it will be no need for the fibroids. Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? Mm Mm-hmm. Go so ahead. I was, yep. was going to say, so if you start detoxifying or getting rid of those toxins that are being built up. Correct. Then your, will your fibroid shrink? Yes. Not only shrink, but then eventually eliminate. Mm. I've had countless amounts of clients who have urinated the fibroid right out of their body. Mm-hmm. And they see it come out in chunks. Mm. Wow. Okay. And the reproductive health is very essential because we're, I don't, I'm just so afraid sometimes with, with the women in pregnancy because the children are, you know, autism or this thing happening or this thing. And this is our children. That's correct. And wow, we need to really pay more attention to that reproductive health. And where do yes. you think it's coming from? Is it coming from the food? Like why we're developing, um, fibroids and yep. things like that. So yeah, this is what I teach on the masterclass, which is 
is coming from multiple sources. Food is absolutely a major component within, especially dealing with um, uh, genetically modified organisms, um, pesticides, and things like this. Mm -hmm. But in addition to the food, vinyl flooring, mm. carpet, mm -hmm. the paint on your walls, um, the Tupperware that you're eating out of, the plastic that you're drinking out of. Right. All of these things, Brittany, that is affecting the reproductive system. Distress. Mm. Condoms. Okay. Mm. Uh, birth control. The the man that you let enter inside of you who ain't got the same health routine and he eating McDonald's and he inside of you. All of these things are affecting your reproductive system. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so that's why you need to go with a holistic approach. It's not just one thing. It's all things. All of it. It's all interconnected. Mm, yes. Yeah. yeah. So you're a father, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, how old are your children? Ten and six. Okay. And two boys. Two sons. Wow. Yes. Wow. How is that? How is fatherhood? Man, it's it's special. It's special. Yeah. I, I don't really know how people... I was just having this conversation. I don't really know how people can not be wanting to really be in their children's lives because I literally see myself. It's mm -hmm. me <laughs> in a different form. Yeah. It's me in a different form. And then when you put that love in them and then they reciprocate that, then it's lovely just to be around them, just to experience them, just to want to... All of that. You understand what I'm saying? And so, man, fatherhood was the best thing that ever happened to me because that's what allowed me to get serious on the entrepreneurial journey. Mm -hmm. When I was 19 and my children's mother was like, hey, I'm pregnant. That day, I left Atlantic Station. I was with my partners. We was in Atlantic Station, you know, going out every other weekend, <laughs> yeah. right? Although I already knew this lifestyle again, but you know, you get caught up. I got caught up into that into that world. But the minute that she told me she was pregnant, I literally left that day and went, got me a place, you know, up north in the north suburbs. And, you know, I changed my life and I said, I got to get serious. I'm not bringing no son in this world as a clown. Mm -hmm. I got to get serious. And that's what led me. So fatherhood changed my life. I love my son. Mm. And at that time, you you were into the holistic. Um, you were aware of that. So did you home birth your children? Uh, was it hospital births? Yep, great question. That was the mm -hmm. plan. Okay. Um, we even went to, um, there was a hospital. I don't think it's around them. It was called like North Atlanta. And it was a water birth then. So it was a water birth. Mm -hmm. um, that was the plan. It did not end up happening because you know she was just in a lot of pain mm -hmm. and so you know they kind of had to transfer but that was the plan okay but yes no you know no vaccines none of that mm -hmm. yeah okay <clears throat> and how do you as the father as the partner right um being by the mother's side how do you advocate for her in the hospital because from my um from, I would just say, my friends or people that I meet and they talk about their experience in the hospital, it seems mm -hmm. as if they pressure you a lot to. That is absolutely You know, correct. it's a consistent pressure, 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 which can cause an overwhelming feeling. Yes. And then at some point you just surrender and say, yes. do whatever. Yes. Right? Yes. So what is your role as the father, as that <clears throat> partner? And how do you advocate for no, keep saying no, no, I don't want the vitamin K shot. Yep. No, I, I, I want to keep the umbilical cord intact for a minute after, you know, the baby come out. Or yep. Yep. like, what what is your role in that? Yeah. That? Well, that's a great question. And mm -hmm. yeah, one day we'll talk about this vitamin K thing too, but because um, they get you with that. They mm -hmm. really do. And so the first thing to answer your question is education. Mm -hmm. You got to be educated. And if you're not educated in this field, get with somebody like ourselves who is educated and then believe them and trust them. Because mm -hmm. then that will give you the confidence and the faith to resist. But if you don't have the education, 
then you got to take what they're saying as face value because you don't know right from left in this mm. field. Mm -hmm. Education. The next thing is, is be a man. We don't really know. There's not a lot of men that's out here because we're not being taught by men, unfortunately. So be a man. What is a man? Man got two things. A spine. Your spine on a metaphysical level represents your belief systems and what you believe in. Mm -hmm. So if you are a man of holistic health and you understand holistic health, then you know it is not in my belief system and in my way of living that we're going to do this. So you got to be very clear up front with the mother, the, the, the mama's mama, the mama's daddy, whoever, that this ain't what I'm about. So if we taking on this aspect of having a child together, this ain't what I'm about. Be a man, have a spine. The second thing that constitutes a man is your testicles, mm -hmm. your balls. Not in the physical sense, because all males have this, but all men don't have the metaphysical understanding of that, which is in the face of adversity, when somebody is testing your spine, you got to have the testicular fortitude to stand your ground no matter what is happening. And you got to be able to, you got to be ready to go to war about who you are and what you believe and what you stand for. Those are the two ingredients that you need in order to be able to stand firm. Because mm -hmm. I ain't care what that doctor said. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, doc. Yeah, we ain't doing that. Not today. Mm -hmm. And use wisdom. Use wisdom. This is another thing. Sometimes we get arrogant and we kind of take that a position like I just demonstrated. But in reality, you can take that position in wisdom because that brings more trouble. So the wise way to deal with it is like, you know what, doc? Ah, you know, I was advised, you know, I was advised by a professional that, you know, we're looking into that vitamin K shot or the vaccine, but we're not going to get it just yet. So, you know, we'll if, if we end up changing our mind, we'll end up letting you mm -hmm. know and schedule it. Mm -hmm. You see, that mm -hmm. offsets. Mm -hmm. Because the minute you start trying to, you know, be arrogant in your position, then they're going to go in their ego of, like, who are you? Mm -hmm. I didn't went to school for 10. So we mm -hmm. offset and we use wisdom. That's wisdom. Right. How how to approach That's it. That's right. Right. That's right. Wow, that was good. Yep. Because you could come off, no, no, no. You gotta be strong. Yep. But right. You don't you don't have you to don't do that. You don't gotta do it like that. Yep. Cause it's cause we don't have they got the system. We in their hospital. Mm hmm Cause if they really wanna do something, they'll do it. They got the baby. Right. They separating you from the baby and so you know what I'm saying? Like they mm -hmm. can do something mm -hmm. if they wanna do something. So be smart. It's just like if you ever heard, I don't know if you ever heard you going through a drive through and you know, you, you know, my mom used to always say, be nice because they got your food. They can do anything to it. So even if they be in a certain kind of way, offset that and be like, man, I'm sorry that you feel that way. Get your food. And then if you want to give them the middle right. finger, then I, you know, whatever. <laughs> right, but right, get right. your food first. Yeah. 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 Same approach. So what so what's up with the vitamin K? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> we gotta talk about it. <laughs> really, like I need the all people, of them. Those spare, know, like. those spare nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, first thing is, is that actually, that was actually, they actually gave my sons both of those. Mm. Without your knowing? No, no. With, with my knowing, mm -hmm. without my consent. But here's what happened. Mm -hmm. I've said no to everything. However. The grandmother was like, well, no, it's just the vitamin K. So now we're in here. I'm like, no. She like, yeah. I'm like, no. She like, yeah. So then the mother has to make the final decision. She just, she just had a baby. She ain't even really in her right. So then she ended up conceding to whatever the mom is saying. And I don't have really a say so in the, in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The first time I didn't know what the vitamin K was. I'm asking, I right, tell me what the vitamin Oh, it's just vitamin K. It helps to not, you know, where the blood is. This is what they saying. Now, right. this deception, again, they they whole world is based on deception. Because why are you not telling the truth? The truth is it ain't just vitamin K. Mm -hmm. So the second time I knew it wasn't just vitamin K. The first time I thought maybe it was just a vitamin. The mm -hmm. second time I knew, though, they put all the same stuff they put in other vaccines. Mm. The mercury and all the other heavy metals are in the vitamin K. So now I'm still advocating like, no. Mm. Same thing again. Well, you know, the brother got it. You know, he's good. So both yeah. times, and I stood my ground. I had my spine. But because the the right is given to the mother, right. what can she you got do? The, she exactly. got the final say-so. Exactly. Wow. 
And every it, when you said the vitamin K, you think, okay, this is vitamin K, right? Like when you go into the grocery store and you see that it says vegan on there or it says uh, plant based, you think, oh, okay, this exactly. is good. But when you look at the ingredients, ingredients, then you get the breakdown of what's in it. Deception. They hold. Wow. Brittany, the greatest tool in their arsenal is deception. Deception is not just telling a lie. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. If I say, Brittany, I just flew here on a private jet. Okay, well, you know, and I landed right in the front. You're like, well, I don't even know if that's possible. That's a lie. you like, eh, I don't know if he's telling the truth on that. You ain't really believe it. Mm -hmm. But deception is, is, I say, Brittany, I, I flew here on a private jet, jet and, my, and my jet is on the ceiling. And then I got three other people to say, yeah, I came with them. Yeah, the jet is on the ceiling. Now you believe the lie. Mm. that's what makes it deception. Mm -hmm. So people are being deceived by way of a lie that is subtle, that sounds good for them to easily believe it. Mm -hmm. So that's the greatest tool in their arsenal. They are masters at perception engineering, engineering how you see things in order to deceive you into thinking that red, right is left and left is right. Right. Wow. Wow. Do you think they know? Oh, the people, the powers that be? Oh, yeah, they absolutely know. like the nurses, know. the doctors, um, the... Some of that's them. That's a part of the deception. That's <laughs> a part. They Right. They're <laughs> deceived themselves. Right. They didn't got, they didn't went to school and went and got indoctrinated for 10 years. Right. So they're working for... So they many of them don't actually know. And mm -hmm. here's how you know. Medical doctors have the lowest life expectancy of any other profession. Mm. Wow. Medical doctors have the lowest life expectancy of any other major profession. Mm -hmm. And they have the second highest suicide rate. Wow. So if the only way for me to be able to come to that conclusion is they got to be deceived. Mm -hmm. Wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> wow. Something something's going on in there. <laughs> <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. This is really good. I'm yes. learning so much. Yes. So I hope everybody who's watching this Come on. is taking away a lot of gems, yes. right? Yes. So we go keep dropping gems and I now want to talk about yep. your personal development, right? Um what are some tools whether it's DVDs, um songs, books, what helps you become more sharp, more, you know, more, what are you, what are you reading? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, what absolutely. are you watching? Absolutely. You yes. know? Yes. So my education started as a child, like I said before, my father is very studious. Mm -hmm. And so he, and, and my mother too. Um, so in them learning, it has already set a preference and a, and a, uh, a position of me always continuing to learn and learn and learn. Right. So from the time I was young, my father had us watching all kind of stuff, even conspiracy, quote unquote, some conspiracy theories, videos, um, you know, uh, supersize me, you mm -hmm. know, about McDonald's. Like I was learning this stuff at six and seven years old. Mm. Okay. So then as I got older, my shift you know, yes, I was continuing to learn. I still continue to learn about health. Um, I like sources like Dr. Michael Greger. He's a, a creator of nutritionfacts.org. I like his research and, and his work. Um, I definitely love, you know, Dr. Sabi. Um, I definitely love uh, Patrick Delves. Uh, he's a he's an herbalist out of Grenada. Um, and I look and I listen and I study under these guys, Dr. Africa, who I actually was able to speak on a stage with him before. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot of these guys was influential, but then also, um, in my own community, that's where my first education came and my nation. That's what we do. We have, we're holistic health advocates. We're preventative health specialists. We are mastering the art of life. And so in that, that's where my first education came from. Mm -hmm. And so in my community, we have what you call Rofim. Rofim are healers. Okay. So like a doctor would be a Rofe. But it, in, in English, doctor actually means, doctor actually comes from somebody who pushes 
uh, pharmaceuticals, which pharmaceuticals actually come from, it actually means poison. Mm. Okay, when you break the words, the etymology of the words down in the Latin. But in Hebrew, the word rofe means healer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. And you knowing all of this information, are you, like you said, you're teaching it to your children. And, okay, tell me, tell me, tell me if I'm doing too much here, right? Okay. You know, I have a four and five year old. Okay, four and five. Four and five. Nice. And, um, you know, I, one of the ways I teach them, like, always tell them we're different, right? We are different. Correct. You know, the way (laughs) we eat, the way we live, we're different, you know, because both of their parents are entrepreneurs. And um, so we don't necessarily, like, work. Correct. How people work. Correct. Like a nine to five. Yes. Um, Even their schooling, their homeschool. So they're not in public school. So a lot of our lifestyle is different. Nice. And I was contemplating. I'm like, okay, I showed them already what's the difference between someone healthy and unhealthy. Yes. By Googling. Okay. Google. Uh, a healthy person. If you just Google a healthy person, they typically have a salad, some fruit. <laughs> okay. Nice. There's a lot of nice. different yeah. colors like on this. their plate. Exercising. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. They fit. You yeah. can see them. They they smiling. And then you put an unhealthy person or a fat person. Yes. It's pizza. It's chips. Mm. It's, you know, so I'm just showing them the different. This is why we eat the way we do. And this is why we don't. Because do you want to look like that? They like, no. Yeah. <laughs> How you right. want to look? Like this healthy person. So one of the things I'm I'm thinking about also introducing them to is the way the animals are being slaughtered, okay. essentially. And okay. I was like, I don't know if that's too soon for their minds to, okay. you know, <laughs> okay. to, to bring that in. Yeah. So um, I don't know. What do you think about that? Do you think that's too, too soon? Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question. And, and it's, it's good that you are even humble enough to even ask because, you know, mm-hmm. when people are on a track about something, they... Just be like, that's what I'm doing. I don't care what your opinion is. Mm-hmm. Um, but how we learn is 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 by talking to other people, especially people we respect. Yeah. And we go back, mm-hmm. you know. So you found me doing holistic health, you know. And so you you was like, hey, I want to know what that's about. Um, the answer to your to that question would be like, or not the answer, but my advice would be maybe so, just because we don't <laughs> want to allow their minds to even get caught up with the process of death and killing and murder Mm -hmm. while they're still more impressionable. I would say on the other side of about eight, nine years old would Mm -hmm. be a good time to kind of show that. At four and five, they're still, I don't know if you know this, but from um, the Jesuits say, if you give me a boy between the ages of zero and seven, I'm going to show you the man. You know what that means? What that means is, mm-hmm. is you was about to say? Um, I was going to say that's just the first cycle to conditioning. Yes, right? right. So during that time frame, you are in a theta state of existence, which means that you don't even understand the difference between reality and fiction. <laughs> this is so funny yep. because their dad sent me a picture of them and they were like playing with the dog. Okay. And I was just like, they, I was on the phone with him. I'm like, they probably just hoping he go speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they don't, they like, they, yeah. no, this Absolutely. dog, because they don't know the difference they don't because know what the they difference. see is like, oh, television, these dogs and animals are speaking. And Correct, <laughs> Brittany. Yes. Okay. So they don't know the difference between um, reality and, you know, fiction. And so because of that, it is imperative that we watch what we instill in them during that age Mm -hmm. from zero to about seven years old. And so after that, that's when a program is pretty set. But after that, then we can start introducing them to reality. Mm, Okay. Because that that was seven through 14. Yeah. That's another, that's another stage. That's the most pivotal stage, Mm -hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. they say this is where a lot of transitionings are happening mm-hmm. for the child because they learn how to deal in reality. Exactly. Yes. And they're also going through puberty. Correct. They're also losing <clears throat> their teeth. They're, you know, Correct. getting adult changes teeth. A lot of changes are happening. Yes. And that's a very important um that's that's why it's very important to teach your kid how to make good decisions and that's to correct. teach them that they can control their reality. That's correct. Yes, 1,000%. That wow. is correct. Oh, I got so much more to talk about, but we got to wrap <laughs> it up. <laughs> 
<laughs> but this was so, so, I mean, this was really good. I enjoy myself. This is really good, man. Yeah. We uh, So if you all are watching, let us know some of the things you, you took away from today's episode. Um, and then let us know if you want Tori to come back on and keep dropping some more gems. You know what I'm saying? Because he got a lot going on. He's very knowledgeable, as y'all could see, you know. And tell me about your webinar again that you, that you do. Yeah, so absolutely. If you go to my Instagram, L-O-J Fit Club, L-O-J F-I-T Club, and you can click the link in the bio, and I got a couple of webinars there. Um, one is the War on the Womb. The other one is how to stop your subconscious mind from sabotaging your health your health journey. And then um, I got another one My uh, one of my brothers did named Yo Safe. Um, it's about testosterone and how men can, you know, reverse them losing their testosterone and become more masculine. Um, and then I do uh, live uh, webinars, which is called The Six Diseases That Disproportionately Affect, affect Black Women. Then I have a challenge called the Seven Day Holistic Health Challenge, you know, dot com, which is a challenge that I do every month to basically introduce the holistic health lifestyle, wherever that level they may be, into, you know, a seven day time frame so they can experience it. Wow. You got a lot going on. We go tap in, we go tune in, we go turn it on because yeah. who don't want to be the healthiest version of, of themselves? themselves? You know, anybody with some sense. Right. Hopefully. <laughs> right. So before we get out of here, what's one piece of advice you would like to share to the world? Yes, um, I would say. To really develop a high moral standard for your life. Your what you are engaging in behind closed doors what you are engaging in in your thought process, what you are engaging in with others, have some morality. We have we live in a world now where knowledge is becoming more, but as the moral standards decline, knowledge is going incline, and wealth is also inclining. And therefore, now a lot of people who with some knowledge and with some money are now doing foolish things because they don't have the moral standard to keep them grounded. And so I would say really, really, really tap into a deep spiritual system that morality is the, is the, is the, the basis and the foundation of it and really dive deep in that. And that'll save you from a lot of pain and heartache that, if not, that you will experience inevitably. Yes, and thank you all again for tuning in. I'm Brittany, your host, and today we had Tori on. So um, make sure you subscribe, okay? If y'all are watching this and you, you're loving the conversations that I'm having with these phenomenal high-thinking guests, subscribe to YouTube. Follow us on Instagram at Holistic Conversations with a W, and I will see you all again soon. Peace. Peace.